Welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Tuesday the 29th of March. Yesterday I was talking a little bit about um, extroversion and introversion and the impact the pandemic has had on that for me and for people in general. Today I'd like to talk about something specific to the church world and um, and the impact the pandemic has had on that as well. So what I'm talking, what I want to talk about is passing the peace. Now for for those of you who don't go to church or who don't go to an Anglican church anyway, this passing of the peace, you might wonder what, what the heck is that? Well, for those of us who are in the church that do that, there is a tradition in the Eucharistic service that after we have listened to scripture and we've heard the sermon and we've confessed our sin and we have confessed our faith in the creed, those are actually reversed. We pray for people. We, we prepare ourselves to receive communion, to have the Eucharistic prayer where the, bre- the bread and the wine is blessed and consecrated, making it the body and blood of Christ. And, and we celebrate that together. We, we share the bread, we share the wine. And in our parish, of the We Parish, we'll be starting that up on Easter Sunday. We're taking a slow, the slow road to China here. We're, we're taking time to, to do things one at a time. Um, but this, but we also, before we, when we make that transition from sort of the, the, the liturgy of the word, where we are listening and talking and praying, and into the liturgy of the sacrament, the body and blood of Christ, we have this transition time that's called the passing of the peace. And in the Book of Common Prayer, we just, so we normally would just say it, but in the Book of Alternative Services, back in about 1985, we introduced this idea that we would actually get up out of our pews, we would move around and we would shake hands with people or kiss them on the cheek, the, the the kiss of peace, or sometimes give them a hug. It wasn't meant to be a, hey, how are you? I haven't seen you in a while. It was more to be where we would look each other in the eye and grasp each other's hands and say, the peace of Christ be with you. The peace be with you. And it's meant to be, I think, in my mind, a sense of reconciliation We've listened to scripture. We've heard God speaking to us and calling on us to live our lives in a particular way. We have prayed for people. We have prayed for the community. We have confessed our belief in God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And we have confessed our sin. We have, we have shed ourselves of those things that we have done wrong. And we have received absolution. And now we are preparing to move into a time of fellowship in which we share in this the body and blood of Christ, in in the, the salvation we have been given and the eternal life in the Eucharist. And so when we come together with the peace, to me it's a it's a it's a binding, a bonding of the community. Because you're not ideally just shaking hands with the people you know. You know, you don't shake hands with the people in your pew and then ignore everybody else as you had for your best friend at the back of the church. If you are indeed going to move from person to person, you shake hands with everybody because we're all together in the body of Christ. And because of the pandemic, obviously, we hadn't been doing that. And I was at St. Saviour's in Vermilion, a beautiful little Anglican church in Vermilion, on Sunday that we're beginning to have a new relationship. I'll be up there once a month to celebrate Eucharist with them. Um, and this was, and I asked, I said, okay, your rules, like my parish, I've decided we're going to do things in a certain way to sort of ease ourselves into, into being back to full normalcy. But I don't know what you've been doing. So I asked her, do you pass the piece? Yep, we passed the piece. Okay. I think today was the actual, not today, but I think um, Sunday this week was the first time they'd actually passed the peace. It was also their first coffee hour. And so we passed the peace. And in passing the peace, watching them, there was such a sense of enthusiasm. People were not taking it for granted. People weren't using it to check in and see how did the doctor's appointment go or how's your mom or things like that. It was very much people holding hands, hugging one another realizing that for the first time in two years, over two years, they were able to really reach out, literally reach out to each other and offer support and care and that all important human touch. I think that sense of human touch is something that that this pandemic has, has helped us all to understand how important it really is. One of the things that I love about being a priest, especially 
a priest who sometimes, not always, not very often, but sometimes has kids in the congregation, is how tactile children are. They touch everything. They're learning, right? They're, they learn through all their senses. They listen, they smell, they taste everything. They touch things. And the number of times as a priest, I have had a child just standing there and all of a sudden I'll realize they're, they're touching my chasuble. So on top of my alb, the white robe that I wear, I often wear what's called a chasuble. And for those of you who are children of the 70s, do you remember ponchos? <laughs> it was like that. So it's a big, if you laid it down, it'd be a big circular piece of material with a hole for your head. And it goes over my, my head and it hangs off my shoulders. And then my arms come up from underneath. But it's often um, a beautiful color to match the colors of the season. So in Lent, it's purple. And they are often decorated, maybe with different color of thread or patterns on them. And sometimes the material is very shiny and smooth. And quite often, I have a child coming down and I say hello to them or give them a hug or give them a high five. And I would chat away to their parents and look down and realize that they were touching my chasuble. Or sometimes when they got to know me, they would sort of, they'd sort of knee high to a grasshopper, me, you know, being the grasshopper here. They would, they, their parents would be talking or something and they would just reach over and lean on my leg, wrap their arms around my leg, and give my leg a hug and just stand there. And I might reach down and touch their heads and, you know, just touch, pat their ha hair, things like that. Nothing inappropriate, just absolutely innocent. Because for children, quite often that touch, that physical touch, is a grounding. If you've ever watched a child at a playground at certain ages, you know that, that sometimes when they go to a playground, at, when they're very young, they won't leave mom. Mom has to come in the sandbox, push them on the swing. But as they get older, they start playing with the other kids. They, they want to go off on their own. But every once in a while, they'll run back and see mom on the bench and give her a hug or say, mommy, look, or something that allows them to touch their mom. And then they go back and play. Having that touchstone, knowing that there's somebody that's a secure, someone they love, being able to touch them and say, hey, you know, this is really cool. Like, there's my mom. I, can, I now can go out. I got my fix. I can go back out. Well, there's something I've noticed that, that that's the same thing for our seniors. A lot of times, um, our older folks, especially those that live alone in apartments or homes or live in, in, in nursing homes or retirement places without other people, you know, widows, widow, widow, widowers, um, they're lacking in touch. They're lacking in touch. Not very often are they touched. If they live in a senior's residence or a nursing home, they may be touched often, but maybe it's because a nurse is coming in to help them or to turn them in bed, things like that. But not all that often is it simply coming in and holding their hand or caressing their face or, or fixing their hair. Perfect example is how often the, the hairdresser in a nursing home or a retirement place is like the most popular person on their day there. Because there's something really beautiful about having someone massaging your head, washing your hair, curling it, and styling it and getting it ready. There's something about being touched. Having another body, another human, touching our body fills us up and gives us hope and grace and peace. And it's necessary. And I think that during the pandemic, we worked so hard at, at being careful not to touch anyone or anything that we actually deprived ourselves, necessarily so, of course, but deprived ourselves of that all important sense of touch and being touched. And so I think that the, that I realized today that, or this week, that I'm you know, thinking about it, that the passing of the peace, which for me for a long time was just sort of the next part of the liturgy, and I'm ashamed to say that, it has taken on a whole new meaning for me because it is that moment that very sacramental moment in which we come together and we become whole. We, we, rec we receive wholeness when we receive the body and blood of Christ because we're receiving Christ into us. We're, our souls become whole. But there's something, there's something about becoming, about touching one another. We've listened to the word. We've listened to the promises. And that transition between listening reaching out to one another and touching one another and then receiving that ultimate touch of the, the sacrament in the body and blood of Christ. There's something in there that's life-giving and fulfilling that we need. And so 
I'm still processing Sunday's passing of the peace and looking forward to next Sunday when I introduce the passing of the peace back into worship at um, St. Thomas and in, in Wainwright and St. Mary's in Edgerton. I think it's going to be a powerful moment for those who are comfortable. Um, for those who, who aren't comfortable, it's okay to stand in your pew and just acknowledge, bow, and say, the peace be with you without having to, to reach out and touch someone. That's okay too. But I think it's important that it's the next step in that we get together and we do these things and we we begin to rebuild these relationships that, that have drifted, I think, during the pandemic. Just one more way that the church really is a place of healing and hope and the building of community. Have a great day. God bless you. And I'll see you again tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel.